On Wednesday night, West Ham United welcome, and I use welcome in the loosest possible term. I was going to say West Ham entertain Arsenal, but let's hope it's not being too entertaining for them. Anyway, they're coming to the London Stadium for the EFL, the Carabao Cup, the EFL Cup, the League Cup, whichever one you want. They're going to be playing us on Wednesday, 7.30 at the London Stadium, and they couldn't be facing us at a better time, both for them and for us, quite frankly. Uh, anyway, uh, here to help uh, discuss all matters pertaining to West Ham and Arsenal uh, is somebody who knows all about uh, operating in uh, red and white. Uh, it's Father Christmas. <laughs> I thought we'd agreed it was Uncle Albert. Uh, uh, Father Christmas works better for Arsenal, uh, but I don't, I'm, not, I'm not feeling much festive cheer, apart from uh, my jumper here, which is uh, Hammers Chat's latest offering. You can buy that in Hammers Chat store. Links in the description below. It's on pre-order. Order it now. Get a fiver off. Rob, um, let's kick it off, my friends. Your thoughts on Arsenal? Well, um, I have to say I've been pretty pretty impressed with them so far. Much Much to my annoyance, it has to be said. Um, yeah, I mean, they've obviously, they're, they're playing some, some good stuff. They're playing some good football. Uh, they've got someone that used to be, uh, doing their thing on, on our particular pastures not so long ago. That it, sounds disgusting. Doing well, that he's, he's, he, he's gone there, obviously, uh, Declan Rice, he's, he's obviously gone there and he's, he's, he's done quite well, actually. It's got to be said. And I think that it's quite funny now that uh, there's, there's a lot of Arsenal fans that were sort of like saying that 105 million was too much. Now they're looking and they're turning around and saying, actually, it's good value for money, and he's worth. He's been worth every penny. Uh, it's quite funny that they've they've changed their minds very very quickly on him. It's quite interesting. Well, I think you're talking to the polite ones. They're saying it in slightly different uh, terms when I speak to them. Uh, are you surprised? You can't be. That's a rhetorical question, I guess. No. But uh, are you surprised how well he's done? No, absolutely not. No, he's he's. Um, I've always I've said it for for a long while. He's a world class player, and the fact that he's he's gone there. He's he's really made them a better team, and it really wouldn't shock me if Arsenal did go all the way this season with him. I think he could be the difference um, from last season to this, um, bridging the gap between them, becoming Premier League champions at the end of the season. It really wouldn't shock me. If I'd have asked you a month ago, do you think we missed Declan Rice? You might have said something. Uh, would you have changed your tune? Do you think now we missed Declan Rice? Would we have lost against Everton? I, I think that any any team that would lose a player of that caliber will will miss him. Even if, look, the business that we did that you know getting Alvarez in, Ward Prowse in, uh, initially seemed like good business, and I still think it it is despite the last three games. But um, I I just think that it was the the parting of the ways for for Declan. It, it's something that I think probably we probably got an extra season or two out of him than otherwise we would or should have done. Um, I, I think that it's, it's a, it's a move for me that, that I think suited all parties at the end of the day, when it happened, we obviously got a lot of money for a guy that was a, an Academy graduate. He was effectively our captain for three years. He's won hammer of the year for three years as well. Uh, we got a lot of money for him and we, we freshened up the squad. Um, it's one of those. I mean, I, I think that I'd have loved to have kept him, but I think it was a move that was inevitable. And uh, look, we we move on. You know, like life carries on. It is what it is. What about other players, Rob? That, that Arsenal have got any uh, leaving Declan to one side? <laughs> Hopefully, the duration Ed, of the video. Eddie and Ketia. Um, he's one. That, uh, uh, I um, I used to frequent another YouTube channel, and there was a gentleman there that, that often would would say that, that Eddie Nketiah was was someone that he sort of rated. And I'll be perfectly honest with you, at the time, I didn't agree. I was very much like, I think he's he's not at that level. And, and I've got to be honest, he's he's proved me wrong. Uh, he scored a hat trick the other day against uh, Sheffield United. I mean, all right, you could make the case that Sheffield United aren't really sort of much great shakes in the Premier League, but be that as it may, he's gone there and he's he scored a hat-trick against them. 
and uh, he's he's doing really really well. I mean, there's, there's a couple of other players. I've always rated Saka and Martinelli. It's quite interesting that uh, another player that I rate, Emil Smith Rowe, has barely got a kick this season. I think he might have started against Sheffield United, actually, Rob. Funny enough, I th- I, th- I think he did. Um, but I mean, sort of like in in terms of the, his qualities, I think for a player he's, of his caliber, he's not really done that much this season. I mean, there's that whisper about we, there's there's some sort of agreement in place potentially as a result of the Declan Rice deal that we get first refusal, whether that's fact or fiction, I don't know. Um, he'd be someone I'd be very interested to sort of get in a claret and blue shirt, but he's a player that I rate quite highly. Um, I feel one player I feel a bit sorry for, and I think he will be involved against us uh, on uh, Wednesday night is, uh, is Aaron Ramsdale. Cause I don't really see he did an awful lot wrong when he got pulled out of the first 11 by Mikel Arteta. I thought he was playing quite well. He's been pulled out of the, the starting lineup by the manager. He's put in David Raya. And Raya, I've got to be honest, I don't think he's been terribly impressive. And yet he's managed to retain his, his first team spot. So I feel a bit sorry for Ramsdale, if I'm being honest. But yeah, I mean, they've got a they've got a good, good, some good players there, some English talent as well weaved in there. And they, they play some good football. It's not going to be an easy game on Wednesday, it has to be said. No, it's certainly it's gonna I'm terrified, uh, quite frankly. But I cling on to some hope and uh and I'll tell you what it is right now, and that is that maybe just maybe because they find themselves top of their Champions League group, but just by a whisker, it has to be said. I think they've won two and lost the other one. They're not gonna be happy seeing uh Tottenham uh, being what appears to be the form team of uh Premier League this season, which uh, which must be uh, um, uh, satisfying uh, for uh, for Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Santa Claus. It's just, it's just Mrs. Claus, actually, isn't it? Um, so I, I do hope that they're going to be mixing things around a little bit. They've got a big game coming up. I think the game that follows our match with them is against Newcastle, which you would anticipate might be one of their biggest tests of the season. What do you think the season holds for them and and now your colours to the mask. I'm going to ask you straight, actually. No fence city, no splintered bums. Are they going to win the league or not? I think it, it's it's difficult to look past City, to be honest with you, Gonzo. It really is. I mean, they've they've won it the last three seasons. I think the only thing that that could count against City in their quest for a fourth league title is is basically history it's never been done in the history of english league football going back to 1887 1888 no team has ever won four consecutive league titles so you were there then do you, do you remember that? I, I i remember it well yeah preston north end did the double in 1888 i remember it well the final look, at the yeah. oval um but no i i, I jest but yeah i mean it's it's never happened before and and whilst i say that it's going to be a it, you you would be hard pressed to sort of bet against anyone but City. I can't I can't sort of like say that the the lot from North Seventeen are going to do it. I just can't. So I mean, my life would be an absolute living hell if they actually became Premier League champions at the end of this year. What so, t- t- if Tottenham became? Because... Don't even say it. Don't even. All right, say not it. not Arsenal. Arsenal could but Tottenham yeah. couldn't because your yeah. domestic life would take a turn for the worse it, it absolutely would so I, th- I think I'd have to say that that through gritted teeth I'd probably have to say that yeah Arsenal let, let's let's go Arsenal to be league champions as I say because I just simply because history suggests that to win it four times in the okay. bounce, it's never happened so I think they're probably the prime candidates to do it I think Declan could be the difference this season Interesting. Very, very interesting. Uh, I mean, my own thoughts on Arsenal are that they are, um, I mean, I think they're becoming a little bit of a machine. I'm not suggesting that they play unattractive football. They do play uh, very, very attractive football. I think they're a hard club to love because of the, the sort of the way the manager uh, yeah. carries on. I think uh, for for a lot of it, I think that's hard. He's sort of like the, the Premier League's Diego Simeone, isn't he? Uh, but then, you know, it's sort of like, you need someone to take the edge off. And I think Saka does that. I think as as unlikable as Arteta is, Saka's really likable. Really, he's really easy to warm to. So I think he's very much should be uh, the face of that football club. And I mean, I think he's... 
it's probably a lesson in there for Manchester United, actually, because it took there was a big hangover, I think, after Arsene Wenger. And actually, during Arsene Wenger's reign, there was a big hangover. It might have been almost like a stadium-induced one. But I, I think now they it, they it probably feels like home for them. They've got their song, haven't they, now? They look like they're, they're at home at the Emirates. And I, I possibly... It's taken him a while and he's... What are you, what are you laughing at? I, I ju- no, I just chuckle at the song. I just think it's so contrived. It's like the, the, the club's been in existence for, what, 100, 120 years, something like that, and they've only just devised a song, for God's sake. Oh, you know, I mean, a song could take a long time to write, as you know, Santo. So, hey, they're, hey it's not, yeah. they're, not, they're not all Christmas carols, you know. Um, it's easy, easy, for you to, Fair play. easy for you to say. Um, no, look, I'd be lying if I said there wasn't... <laughs> A cringe element uh, uh, to it, but uh, but there, there you go. I, I won't won't say won't go on too much about that. I, I think Martinelli's a very very good player as well. And uh, look, they're packed full of of really good talent. And and Declan is an amazing, an amazing footballer. And it may well take a period of time to take the edge off uh, for us as West Ham fans to look back. And I'm sure there will come a time where we look at that image of him lifting up our first trophy uh, in over 40 years and, and and look at it back with some warmth and think, yeah, you know what? Well done. Well done. Well done, Declan Rice. And I do, I do think he served us very, very well. And hopefully it's up to us to spend the money that we got from him. Um, well, and hopefully we'll, we'll see, but hopefully it will prove that we, we have done so. And we'll, we'll just have to wait and see about that. Um, I think, think from myself, play? sorry. Well, sorry, this is going to be my question. Play? Well, this is going to be my question. So they have Newcastle next, and uh, they've they're still in in the midst of their Champions League com- campaign. That's the measure of a of a top team. So this is this season. Can they mix it at the top echelons in the Champions League and mount a title challenge? It's easier for Tottenham. It, it just is uh, because they don't have the distraction of being in Europe, and we know this. From West Ham, it's not easy. I mean, look what we've just done. We just lost to Olympiacos, lost to Everton. It's not easy. Um, I don't know what the fitness levels of their squad are, but I wouldn't be surprised if he does mix it up a little bit. And if he does, I think it gives us a chance. But we have to be on it. And this is where it goes on. We we'll start to talk about West Ham now a little bit because Alvarez and Pakatar both for different reasons. One of them, a bit of silliness. The other one, a tantrum, a bit of petulance, as we discussed in our in our Patreon uh, player ratings video earlier. I think they should both feature in this match. If I was David Moyes, bearing in mind they can't feature against Brentford, play them now, right? Absolutely. And uh, Emerson comes back into the equation as well, doesn't he? So he does, well, he, does for, he does for me. How strong would you go in this match? I'd go as strong as we possibly can. I, I seriously, I mean, I think uh, in goal, I think that in Lucas Fabianski, I think if we brought him in, is he a significant drop off in quality from Alphonse Areola? I, I don't think he would be. But I think other than that, I, I wouldn't look to change an awful lot much. I think I'd, I'd, I'd want to go strong because for me, look, winning that trophy last last season in Prague it's it was it was a beautiful moment you know 43 we- years we'd been waiting I don't want to wait another 43 years this could be our best opportunity potentially if we can get past Arsenal there's no reason why we can't go all the way I mean what a confidence boost that would be if we could somehow manage to do it by hook by crook however the victory comes if we could get past an Arsenal team that is going to be there or thereabouts at the end of the Premier League season That'd be a massive boost to confidence, not just for this tournament, but also beyond that for the for the rest of the Premier League season. Hopefully it would get things back on track. Well, I, I completely agree. And I would really want us to go for this. I think this is important. I think it's easy following our uh, uh, humiliation at the hands of Aston Villa, um, a pretty crappy performance by the uh, majority of the second string against Olympiacos. And then I think... Uh, um, a rudderless uh, display against Everton, it would be easy for us to think they're just going to turn up and they're going to roll us over. But I think we need to try and give them a bloody nose, actually. I think we need to try and give them something to think about. And I want us to go for it. I'm sort of... Look, Arsenal at their best are going to be very, very hard to contain. 
but they might not be at their best. And let's not assume that every match, every team is at their best. There's going to come a point where they're going to want to, this is going to be low down on their priority list. This will be number four. It absolutely will be. This will be number four. And there's going to come a point where they don't want to commit too many players to the cause and then mess up. They, they, they will know they can't really afford to slip up against Newcastle. Tottenham, we've already discussed. Man City might be. If, if it looks like Haaland is, might start scoring again, but he scored a double, didn't he? Uh, certainly yesterday. Uh, Liverpool, oh, that, that, that terrible um, bit of misfortune has befallen Diaz, of course, which is one of the most shocking stories I've heard in football. But they plough on, they carry on. They look like they're at it this season, Liverpool. They really do. Arsenal are not in a position where they can carry on losing points if they want to maintain pressure on those top teams. So there will come a point where they have to think, well, actually, this Haribo Cup is not so important compared to what's going to go on at the weekend, uh, particularly because they'll be up for it. Eddie Howe's team will be right up for it as well. So I, I think it's time for us to put pressure on them. And I would go very, well, I say go very strong. I've got some changes to the team, but they're not changed. They're changes, which I think will be improvements. I think that's, that's my point. Uh, give me your team, please, Rob. Luke Fabianski in goal. This is this is the team that I would pick. Not oh, necessarily. Yeah, sorry, the team that I, I no, gee, that. I should have done the disclaimer. This is what we want, not what we think David Moyes yeah. will do. Well, well done, Rob. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I think I'd like to see. I'd like to see Lucas Fabianski in goal. Um, I think I'd like to see Vladimir Kufal at right back. I'd like to see Emerson at left back. I'd like to see the centre back pairing. I would like to see Aguer and Mavropanos. I'd like to see Former that Arsenal combination. Player, Mavropanos. Yep, Mavropanos going against his old club. Uh, I'd then I'd like to see a slight change in shape. I'd like to see a midfield three yep. with Alvarez at the base, uh, and then just ahead of him, I'd like to see uh, James Ward-Prowse and Lucas Paqueta. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to see wide. Left, I'd like to see um, Mohamed Goudis. Wide right, I'd like to see Jared Bowen. And through the middle, this is me, I'd like to see Divine Mubama. I've picked him myself, Santa. I've done exactly the same thing go. myself. So, well, not exactly the same team. So I've got a slightly different team to you. Fabianski in goal. I would actually play Dan Chester's at right back. Uh, it's two okay. reasons. Number one, I the way Soufal has played in the last two or three games, Soufal started the season so, so well. I think he's been crap in the last uh, couple of games um, that we've seen him. Uh, Chester's just keeps getting better. Uh, that, and I think we need to see a viable option for if if Soufal either A, gets injured or keeps being rubbish for the, like he has the last couple of games. Um, he was good, don't get me wrong. He had a re some really good assists, but form is well, temporary by its very nature. That's yeah. why it's called form. So if, if he doesn't get back to form, we want a viable option. Tilo Kera ain't that viable option. It's pointless thinking about Ben Johnson. You know what? The manager's got no faith in Ben Johnson, right? They, they, the club are going to release him at the end of the season anyway, right? So who can play there and who can excel? Well, I'd try for Chester's. And, I, and it's not just for the future. I think at the moment, I think if Chester's had played against Everton, I think he would have played better than Sue Fowl. There you go. So I'm talking about merit now. I played Mavropanos as well against his former club uh, because there's no way Zuma can play two games a week. Forget about that. I played Tilo Kera at centre-back as well because I, I want to mix it up. I want to, I'm, I'm not impressed with the centre-back pairing of Gerd and Zuma because strikers just keep running in between the two of them. So I want to sort of something else out there. Emerson, you're absolutely right, would start for me at left back. Uh, I'd play Edson Alvarez because, well, because he's probably, he's our only defensive midfielder, in fact, but he is, as I've already mentioned, suspended for the upcoming game against Brentford. And I would actually play Lucas Pacatar next to him in the number eight role that he plays for Brazil. Well, not anymore, he doesn't. But, um, I, I, you know, you know that position that we, we very much uh, saw him play uh, in the World Cup. Uh, so I think that's what I'd very much like to see. The two of those there ahead of them, I'd play Mohamed Kadoos. The whole point is I want to go for it, Rob. I want to go for it. And actually, and something else has got to give. And I think that lack of creativity at, deeper in midfield was, was a problem. I think when we got to the end of the game against Everton, there were a lot of players sort of chucked in there and operating in sort of advanced 
midfield positions, wing positions, something like that. But actually someone to pull the strings from deep. So I'd play Pakatar as a central midfielder. Could do some front of him. Then I would, I would play Bowen on the right. I'd play Cornet on the left. Uh, give him something to think about, you know, and actually give the boy a chance. Let's give him a chance. There's no point playing Ben Rama there. It's just no point. We, we know what will happen. Uh, ben Rama will not. I don't know if they play Ben White there. I've no idea. I don't know what. I can't pretend to know what Arteta is going to do. But I cannot see him, whoever they play. I just can't see Ben Rama causing him too many problems. He's not quick enough and he's not strong enough. Um, so I want someone to try and get in behind the lines. And you know what? Sometimes he'll be offside, but it does mean he's trying uh, to get behind the back line. And I would also play um, Divine Obama up front as well. Uh, because why not? Just why not? And I just, what I want to do is I think the inclusion of Chester's, I think the inclusion of Kera, and I think the inclusion of Cornet as well, and Mubama bring some energy. We, we looked, it's, I'm not saying we're a massively old team. We could, what's Caduce, 23 or, or something like that? Uh, Alvarez is, is an old, you know, there's a load of players under 30, but I tell you what, they looked a little bit tired and they looked a little bit, um, I don't know about under the weather, but, but maybe just a little bit, bit leggy a bit leggy maybe yeah absolutely mm. so um I, i'd be i'll be going i'll be going for this team um are, are, do you have any confidence for this at all rob always always yeah. this is a london always. derby it's a cup competition under the lights you just never know they're, they're a fantastic football team but on our day if we manage to put it together if we manage to go into it with a little bit of belief and we have a little bit of luck on the night. You always need a little bit of luck. Anything's possible. Do you think Moyes will go for it? Probably not. Really? See, I think Probably he will. Not. I think he will, because I think he does. I think he goes for it in all these. Uh, there was one game, ironically, against Everton, I think during his first stint, a cup game, and he didn't go for it. He didn't go for it. And aside from that, I think he's gone for every cup competition. And I'd say this as someone that has been heavily critical of managers over the years at West Ham, which has prioritised the league. You know, the league is a be-all and end-all. I think Moyes is the one manager that understands the value of the cup. And he'll be looking at this now, and he will not be impervious to the fact that he's under criticism at the moment. And he will know more than anyone the value of a run in the cup and how that can dissipate some of the external criticism that might be based on your league form. and. I think he goes for this. I really, really do, because he he will know more than anything. As much as everyone's on a bit of a downer at the moment, I think following us, uh, following Everton and, and the other games and, and Olympiakos, West Ham win this, and we go into the hat. We beat Arsenal. And we go into the hat for the next round, and we get a favourable draw. I think the mood changes a lot, a lot. So and it's quite funny, really, because I don't think he can turn the mood around in the league in one game. And I'm talking about the, the, the mood of the supporters and the mood, just mm. the vibe around the club. And I don't think he can change the moods of the club with one game in Europe. But you beat Arsenal and get through to the next round of the cup and you don't know who you're going to face, then it, I, I absolutely think the mood changes. I think people start to believe because irrespective of whether you or I think Arsenal are going to win the league, they are Highly likely to be one of the best four teams in the country. I, th I think that's would that be fair? I think that's fair, isn't it? I, I'd agree with that statement, yes. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So you, you knock this team out, you're capable of knocking anyone out. And uh, so you've got to be in with a chance. And they, you know what? They say when they say when in trophies it becomes a habit, I guess. Um, we get to find out. Uh, Rob, any any final last words, my friend, and a little cheeky Christmas prediction from you. Um Final words, if Declan plays, this is just me, um, I actually think he deserves a decent reception. I, I, I think it would be really poor if he plays or if he, if he comes on as a substitute. I think it would be really poor if we got a chorus of boos and, and sort of like, you know, look, there's a banter's one thing, but I, I think that I've, I've heard some bitterness and all that. And I personally, I just, I just don't really see it myself. Um, I, I would get, I'll give him a decent reception after that. He's just another ex player, he's a player of another team. That's it, we move on. Um, as far as the score predictions concerned, uh, 
I, I really don't care how it happens. I think we we need to get some positive momentum. Uh, as I say, I do do I think that David Moyes will necessarily set up that way? I have my doubts. I don't know though. It's it's a it's a London derby cup competition under the lights. Anything can happen if we if we set up right. We're we're capable of beating them. Um, my head will probably say something different, but I'm gonna go with my heart. I'm gonna go uh, West Ham a two one win. Oh, I like it. I like it. I really do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I don't think that I, it's hard to say. I don't think Declan gets booed. I really don't. I really don't. I, as I do, I understand there's been some criticism, but I, I do. As you know, as, as we've said on this channel before, I do think there's there's a there's a difference between what people say online and what happens in the stadium. I really do. I understand there were boos at the end of the Everton game, but I, I, that's that's different. I, I think like, by and large. Um, there's there's an appreciation for what Declan did for West Ham, and uh, and, and do you know what? I'm pleased we've got through this preview without we've discussed him a little bit, but with it not over sort of burdening uh, the whole video, so to speak, because the whole narrative can just become about Declan, and 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 I, I don't want that to be. I'm sure that would be the case in the you know in the wider media, whatever they call it, the mainstream media. Uh, but yeah, I, I think he, I think he'll get. I hope he'll get a. A warm, a warm round, a lukewarm round of applause, certainly. But it's it's very, very nice, um, Sansa, to hear that he's um, that he's on your good list. Uh, thank he you is. very much. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for joining us. Um, and uh, yeah, well, there, there you go. Thank you, thank you. Not just thank you for to Santa for joining us. Thank you to you lot for uh, staying tuned for twenty six odd minutes in this preview. I guess we're about to find out. On Wednesday evening at 7.30, whether David Moyes is naughty or whether he's nice.